Hi there, my name is Cal and this is the CM Builder Sandbox Project Onboard Tutorial. Our first thing is just run through a quick agenda. Uh, goal of this is to recreate the completed sandbox scenario which has been copied into your CM Builder account. Uh, to get started, the first thing we'll do is we'll actually just run through uh, the completed scenario just to get an idea of what we're going to be accomplishing. We'll then go through the process of duplicating uh, the blank scenario, uh, introduction and navigation of CM Builder. I will then overlay a um, a site logistics plan just to familiarize yourself with the drawing overlay tool and get our self oriented on site. And we'll then go through the process of placing a couple of resources, uh, both or all point based resources, linear resources, uh, and guided resources. In the second session, uh, we'll go through the import and sequencing. Uh, we're going to import a schedule. This one happens to be a Microsoft project schedule, but it's the same uh, regardless of what software you're coming from. I will then import and position a couple 3D Revit models in this case. We're then going to go through the process of sequencing those 3D models based off the schedule and then doing the excavation um, after it's been sequenced. Last thing we'll do is just kind of tag on some uh, the model split function as well as the presentation visuals, uh, which won't necessarily aren't, aren't necessary, but we'll uh, dive into the tools anyways. And at the end, we'll get into the uh, presentation and sharing options of uh, finalizing our simulation, adding in some annotations, a few additional resources. I'll go into the presentation tools, uh, how to create a video presentation, as well as how to export uh, the uh, images and video files. Uh, so first things first, we're going to dive into the completed simulation. Uh, we can see this is our site. It happens to be in uh, Chicago. We can flip through these first couple milestones. Uh, so we have a few resources brought into the site, uh, site fence, uh, offices, all that good stuff. We have our um, clear site and retention piling, a couple phases of bulk excavation. We can get into our concrete pours, and I'm just using the arrow keys right now to navigate between milestones. I have our tower crane mobilized, and then we have our envelope. And fantastic. That is the completed simulation. So now we can dive into creating that from scratch. Uh, this is the sandbox project, which should be copied into your uh, scene builder account. Uh, if it is not, please reach out. We're more than happy to copy it into your um, account, and then you can follow along with these videos. Our first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is duplicate uh, the duplicate me scenario. Uh, as the name suggests, that's just gonna be a blank scenario that everyone can duplicate uh, to recreate uh, for themselves. You can either use the duplicate a scenario button right up at the top, or I prefer to actually just use the three dots uh, up in the top of the scenario card and select duplicate. We can then call it whatever we like. Um, I'm just going to call it Cal Training. To kick things off, we'll just jump into some basic navigation of Scene Builder. To rotate the screen, you can just hold your left mouse button and move the mouse back and forth. To pan, you can hold the right mouse button. And to scroll in and out, you can just use a scroll wheel on your mouse. Over at the top left corner, you can always see your tree button. Basically, that's just going to be an ongoing list of everything that's in the scenario. It's a pretty short list getting started, but when we add drawing overlays, uh, 3D models, resources, they're all going to populate into this list and can be found at any point. You can expand and collapse the tree just by selecting on the tree icon. Uh, beneath that, we can see all of our different uh, tools. We'll dive into all of them in a lot more detail uh, as this uh, presentation goes on. And then up at the top, we can see our milestone bar. Basically, each milestone can be associated with a particular calendar date, and you can navigate between the different milestones using the arrows on the right or the left. Uh, currently, there's just the one milestone, so those arrows aren't appearing, but we'll see them later on. Down at the bottom right, we can always toggle between satellite and street view, and we can toggle into 2D and true north. And we also can turn on and off the icon mode, uh, which is just going to display particular uh, resources as icons um, to make them a bit more visible. Lastly, there's the sequencing view down at the bottom. Uh, we'll jump into that when we start sequencing the 3D models with the timeline. The uh, first thing I like to do with a new project is just bring in a drawing overlay. A lot of elements aren't going to show up on a satellite view, such as uh, your building footprint, your property line. Uh, so bringing in a drawing overlay is a great way to just orient yourself on site. 
Uh, if you do have a 2D logistics plan, that's a great place to get started. Uh, hopefully CM Builder will replace 2D logistics plans eventually. Uh, of course, it always takes a little while to update those workflows. So if you have a 2D logistics plan, uh, you can always import that and start use that as your starting point. If you are going to upload a new drawing, you can always go up into Drawing Overlay, uh, select Upload File, and you can import a JPEG, a PNG, or PDF. Uh, for this particular project, I've already brought it in, uh, just so that everyone has access to it right off the bat. Uh, we can see under my Drawing Overlays, uh, the Roxy Logistics Plan is already there. So I can just right click and select Edit. And uh, we can just uh, select Disconnect from Timeline check the box here. I should display that drawing overlay. If we were to have uploaded a new drawing, uh, this is how it would appear, uh, probably uh, far too large and kind of centered on the map. Uh, drawing overlays are the one thing you will have to scale inside Scene Builder. Uh, note that 3D models, resources, satellite data are all going to come in uh, to scale automatically. Unfortunately, that information isn't embedded in uh, drawing overlays. A couple different ways we can scale it to the correct size. Uh, one of which is using the manual scale option, where you can either scale by distance, where you just select two points, type in the distance, and it's going to scale it to the correct size. Uh, we also can use manual scale, where you just type in that one quarter inch equals one foot ratio is typically in the bottom right hand corner of your architectural drawings. Um, or the method I typically prefer is using the align and position tool. Align and position is just going to walk you through selecting. Uh, two points on the drawing, which is shown on the right pane, and then uh, the same two points on the satellite image on the left pane. Uh, with those four points selected, it's just going to scale, um, rotate, and position your drawing all in one foul swoop. Uh, to demonstrate, I'll just zoom in. You can see there is the corner of the sidewalk shown in our drawing overlay. And I'll just grab that same point in the satellite image on the left. And I'm going to pan across site, and I can see there's a street lamp down in the bottom right hand corner, which I'll select. Uh, when importing a drawing, it's great to use an existing conditions plan or any sort of drawing that has some um, existing reference points that you can also find on the satellite image. And you also want to make sure you use points that are relatively far apart. Um, of course, you're inherently going to be a couple inches off selecting points off of a satellite view. A couple inches over 100 feet isn't too big of a deal, or a couple inches over 10 feet is proportionally going to throw you away out of whack. And we can now see that drawing has been rotated, scaled, and positioned in place. I can just bring up and down the opacity to verify that all those curves are lining up correctly. Once I'm happy with that, I can just select Confirm, and that drawing has been rotated, scaled, and positioned. We can see it is still floating up above the map surface. A couple different things we can do to uh, fix that. Uh, we could just select move and bring it down, of course. Uh, however, typically I'd prefer to project that on the terrain. That's actually going to drape it over top of the map surface, essentially replacing the satellite imagery. This is a pretty flat site, so it's not overly dramatic, but if it was a, a hilly site, it would kind of drape over top of the a topography. And we also have the option to include projection on dirt. I typically, I like to turn that off just so when I create my excavation operations, uh, the drawing won't be visible. Um, however, in this case, I'll leave it on as it is just for reference. Another option we can use is remove white background. Uh, so if we toggle that on, it's just going to show the line work, which can give us a pretty cool effect. Um, if you're wanting to display grid lines or uh, anything like that on an architectural plan. Uh, up at the top, this is the timeline. We're going to dive into that in a lot more detail as this uh, presentation progresses. Uh, however, this drawing, we're just going to want to use it for reference. We don't want it shown most of the time. Uh, so what I'd recommend doing is just using the disconnect from timeline checkbox. Then when I select done, it's going to be hidden, and it's always going to be hidden by default when I open the scenario. Uh, when I am wanting to use that drawing for reference, I can just hover over the three dots, or select the three dots up at the top. I hover over drawings and then toggle on my never shown drawings uh, whenever I'm wanting to use them for reference. Now that our logistics plan has been placed, we can place a few resources into the scenario. Uh, first resource we can place is this JSO J300N hammerhead crane, which is listed on the logistics plan. Uh, all the resources can be accessed by selecting resources over on the far left uh, to open up the resource catalog on the right. We can see right now there's 2,290 different resources. 
of that catalog is constantly growing based off customer requests. Uh, so it'd be interesting to, to compare to what you see in your screen now of how many resources there are currently. I definitely would recommend everyone have a look through the different categories as you familiarize yourself with, with what is available in the catalog. Um, however, you can always use the search function as well. Uh, to find our hammerhead crane, we're just going to go into equipment and vehicles and go into fixed cranes. And I can see that the JSO J300N is listed at the top just because I've used it recently. Uh, however, we could also scroll through this list uh, or filter based off uh, reach or max capacity. When I select that uh, hammerhead crane, it's just going to give me a preview of it in the 3D viewer, which I can then place wherever. Uh, whenever I first place that resource, um, I can go into the move tool uh, to open up our context handles. Uh, we can then move this resource along a particular axis uh, by hovering over the arrow. I also can move it in a given plane by selecting or hovering over the um, square that's shown in the corner of that context handle. At any point, I can drop it uh, down or bring it up to the map surface uh, just by selecting drop to surface. Uh, we also can rotate the resource using the rotate handle, uh, as you might have suspected. Uh, we can move it around the z-axis. And an interesting trick is if you hold the shift key, it's also going to snap automatically to 45 degree increments which is really helpful in a lot of um, construction applications. You also can rotate a resource along the X or Y resource, or uh, axes, sorry. However, of course, that's not something you want to do for tower crane. Uh, so at any point, you can just select undo up at the top or control Z to undo the last action. Uh, the most interesting, most fun option with the tower cranes, or most of the resources, I'd say, is the adjust function. This is where we can change all the actual mechanical properties of the crane. Uh, so extend or retract the, uh, the jib, a counter jib, or mast. And all of these are exactly accurate to manufacturer specification, uh, not only like the minimum and a maximum lengths, but even the increments in which they grow. Uh, so if JSO only makes five meter mast segments, this crane is only gonna be allowed to grow in five meter increments. However, you don't have to take our word for it. At any point, you can just go to the specs tab of the resource, select this checkbox, and preview or download the manufacturer specification straight through the platform. You're also able to easily validate uh, crane picks uh, by going to the adjust tab and toggling on or off the hook envelope just to show uh, exactly what this crane can reach at this particular hook location. A couple other options with the resource are just going to be under the uh, resource side sheet. And we can always swap the resource to a different make or model. Uh, so if this crane didn't have the capacity or wasn't available, we can always swap it out easily with a different model. Uh, we can show the logo. Um, the logo is restricted to premium and enterprise subscriptions, but if you do have that option, you'll be able to change to any logo which you have uploaded uh, at the company level. And you also can switch between different positions such as the counter jib or the mast, um, just depending on what locations are available on the particular resource. There's also some custom color options available. Uh, so you can set it to one of the presets up at the top, or you can actually create a custom color uh, down below using the palette, just depending on what is available or what is on site. Uh, once again, there is the timeline option here. Uh, we don't have any other milestones, but we'll jump into that later on as well. Uh, the second type of resource, which I'll mention, is the polyline-based resource. Uh, so the crane is an example of a point-based resource. The majority of resources are point-based resource. Just click and drag. Um, a polyline resource, you're going to create a sketch, and it's going to create individual copies of that resource along the entire perimeter. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different examples, but the most obvious of which is the fence. So I'll just go into our resources. This time, I'm going to go into our logistics and facilities category and select fences. I can then use this chain wire jersey barrier or any other style of fence. Um, and we can see by, by default, my cursor has turned into a pen icon and there's just a little plane indicated. Uh, note, I could place this fence as a point-based resource just to place a single fence panel. However, you're typically gonna wanna place it as a polyline. Uh, the first 
point I click is going to be the elevation of my sketch. Uh, you can change this after the fact, uh, but generally it's always best to sketch the fence um, at the elevation you want to end it up at. Uh, so I'll just place my sketch at the ground level. I'll pop into 2D. Uh, you're always going to have a bit of an easier time sketching in 2D, uh, so you can toggle into that quickly using the 2D icon. It's just going to make your sketch more accurate. Uh, for the sake of a fence, I'm just going to roughly sketch around my fence shown in my logistics plan. However, note, we can always display a uh, length angle um, of the sketch, adjust these by the dimension if we want, or we can use some of the sketch tools such as projecting 3D elements um, or offsetting the sketch line to make it more accurate depending on our need. Now, once I'm happy with the sketch, I can just select confirm. And we can see this fence has been automatically created along the perimeter of that sketch. Uh, we can still adjust the individual fence panels to make them taller uh, or wider. Just note that if you do that, it's going to change uh, the height or width of every panel around the entire perimeter. If I do want to create two uh, different types of um, fence or two different um, heights of fence, I would just have to create two different polylines in that application. Uh, at any point, I also can select Edit Sketch uh, to edit the sketch that is uh, creating this fence. Um, a couple other options we have. Once again, we still have the uh, logo. Uh, we can select if we want. We can still use that swap functionality we had with the crane. Um, the same as the custom color. A few new options are now we have project on terrain. Uh, that's going to be on by default. And basically, that means every individual fence panel is going to be dropped onto the terrain. Uh, this is a pretty flat map, so it's not too dramatic. But we can see there's a little bit of a step between these panels. I mean, if it was a steep hill, it would be a lot more dramatic, uh, kind of that staggered effect down the hill. However, we can always turn that off and put the fence at a set elevation. A so site can be really helpful if you're wanting to do scaffolding or uh, edge protection on a suspended slab, uh, or maybe soil anchors at a certain elevation on your excavation. We also have the spacing option. Uh, this particular fence is going to be overlap excessive length by default. That means it's going to calculate the length from this point um, all the way to this point. It's going to divide that by the panel width. Whatever little fudge factor there is, it's just going to overlap the panel slightly to compensate. Uh, we also could use no overlap, which is just going to leave a slight gap between the panels to compensate. Or finally, we could do custom spacing. Uh, likely not what you're going to want to use for a fence, but for traffic pylons or traffic arrows. Uh, creating a custom spacing can uh, be a good way to achieve your desired aesthetic. Awesome. Uh, the third and final type of resource placement is a guided resource. There's not a ton of applications of those, uh, but the most obvious is a gate. Uh, so once again, I'm going to go to my logistics and facilities. I'll go to my gate section, and I'm just going to place this double swing metal mesh gate. However, there's a bunch of options. Uh, once again, we do always have the option to place this gate as a point-based resource. However, I'm going to place it as a guided resource, uh, where it's only going to let me place it on top of an existing fence line. Wherever I click, it's just going to automatically cut a hole uh, for this gate um, and place the gate in that, that opening. We still have the option to go to Move on Guide and then just fine-tune that location after the fact. We still have the adjust option as well, so we can make this gate larger. We can open and close the gate, just depending on how we're wanting that to be displayed. And I'll just place another gate uh, here. Again, I'm just place, placing these based off of our logistics plan, which has already been imported. And one final gate over on this location. Fantastic. And that brings us to the end of the introduction of the CM Builder onboarding. Uh, so see you shortly for the import and sequencing section.